did you have a reading on dividends at level 1 yes. yes so at level 1 their focus was more uh, on getting you acquainted with different terminology okay so there we started with first understanding what is dividend and what is dividend sharing profits in in cash with the shareholder and then if you remember uh, there was regular dividend and special dividend and liquidating dividends so regular dividend is what you pay regularly and special dividend is yeah so if you have a one time large cash flow then you want to pay that pass it on to the shareholders but also want to tell them that don't expect this next year then you would call this as a bonus dividend or special dividend and liquidating is when company has liquidity and it is paying off in parts then did we also learn that when a stock goes ex dividend in theory value of the stock will reduce by the value of the stock will reduce by the amount of dividend for example uh, stock price is 50 dividend per share is uh, let's say 5 so the date on which stock goes ex dividend you would expect the stock price to be 45 now at level 1 when we said this we assumed that there were no taxes okay but at level 2 of course and even in practice if you would see not necessary that it works exactly the same way not necessary that a dividend of 5 will actually make stock 45 because there are so many other variables which are operating around it so at level 2 we kind of go a step closer to what happens in real life so we'll learn to incorporate impact of taxes on dividend and taxes on capital gains so that would be one part then do you remember uh, different dates so first was declaration date then then holder of record date and payment date and assuming a transaction cycle of three days ex dividend date would be two days prior to the holder of record date which means if you buy the stock on ex dividend date then you would be eligible to receive cash dividend no so if you buy the stock on ex dividend date you would not receive dividends anymore if you need to buy then you would buy a day before the ex dividend date which is your last come dividend date are we okay and then towards the end did we also discuss about uh, the fact that dividend and share repurchase is more or less same concept correct so now uh, again at level 2 we will have similar discussion but much more in depth so with this background let's start this is your first learning outcome you can give heading in the notes theories of dividend policy theories of dividend policy corporate finance authors at level 2 like Modigliani and Miller way too much so we will have a MM theory again theories of dividend policy so the first one is MM's dividend irrelevance theory so it works like this what under the same restrictive assumptions that we saw in the capital structure reading what these guys says by the way do you remember who is MM? Modigliani and Miller so what this guy says that uh, imagine you have a stock of 100 and you have 5 such stocks so value of your portfolio is 500 company decided to pay a dividend of 20 rupees ok so 20 into 5 how much cash do you have now 100 so this is dividend scenario but your stock value is now how much 80 into 5 why 80 because the value of stock will reduce by the amount of dividend so you have stocks worth how much 400 so in case if the company pays dividend you will have cash of 100 stock of 400 what if there is no dividend okay what if the company did not declare any dividend then what you can create is a homemade dividend okay so what would be a homemade dividend you sell one stock okay so once you sell one stock then 100 into 1 your cash is how much 100 and how many stocks are you left with 4 so your stocks are worth 400 and if you would observe the end outcome that you see here and the end outcome that you see here is exactly same is that okay this is what they call as dividend irrelevance theory okay so I think you should write this 
Okay, so assuming you've written this, may I? Next one is dividend preference theory. So here, an easiest way to remember is, you would say a bird in the hand, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now to me, to some extent, this makes sense from a uh, more mathematical perspective. Think of it this way, that value of any stock is what? Present value of future cash flow. So if there is a dividend, there is a certainty around the amount of dividend that you are going to receive for companies which are paying dividend. And because they are relatively certain, your discount rate would be lesser. But if there is no dividend, only capital appreciation, then there would be some amount of uncertainty, correct? And because of the uncertainty, your discount rate would be higher and therefore present value of cash flows would be little lesser. Okay, so what they say here is that investors would prefer to receive the cash in dividends today as against the capital appreciation that might come in future. Is that okay? So investors prefer certainty of uh, current cash to future capital gains. Next theory is tax aversion. So there are three of them. We have seen two. First one was, the first theory was dividend irrelevance theory, uh, which was by Modigliani and Miller, then dividend preference theory by Lindner and Gordon, and now tax aversion theory. Now tax aversion theory simply means that dividend policy will be influenced by taxes. Dividend policy would be influenced by taxes. Okay, so they've in, in curriculum, they have uh, gone at length discussing how certain countries in the past have taxed dividends very heavily. Okay, I think they've said US uh, at some stage, taxes on dividends were as high as 70%. Okay, and because of such high level of taxes on dividends, and which in a way is a double taxation because you tax income and then you tax dividend again. Therefore, companies will try to avoid dividends. Okay, and maybe that is true to some extent in Indian markets as well because we have a dividend distribution tax. On top of dividend distribution tax, if your dividend inflow is very large, which is more than 10 lakhs, then you have a additional layer of taxation on the additional the dividend income that you receive. Okay, so tax aversion theory is purely tax specific. Companies will configure their dividend policy which is a function of taxation laws in those countries. Are we okay with this? Alright, so next learning outcome now. Which is type of information that dividend initiations increases, decreases or omission may convey. So relatively straightforward, I will identify the important points for you. All right. Now, I, I kind of find this section very interesting. Uh, imagine you are CEO of a listed company with very uh, diversified shareholding. Now, you have a certain amount of profits and you have two choices, either to pay those profits to shareholders in dividends or keep them with yourself. Now, your shareholders do not really know how you think about business. Okay, but think from your perspective, if you're really confident that even next year you'll be able to generate similar type of profits, you would not mind or hesitate paying those dividends in cash because you know that you would be able to pay dividends in cash next year as well. But if you're a little uncertain, if you're not really sure how the next year is going to turn out, then you might be inclined not to pay that dividend. Correct? So what they've said here is that through dividend initiations and increases, markets generally try to pick up signals. But the signal could be other way around. For example, suddenly there is a large amount of dividend that's being paid. Then the markets might also think that maybe the company does not have, does not see a very strong <coughs> reinvestment or growth opportunity going forward. Okay, so dividends generally give a mixed type of signal. And then they've also given some empirical data here. In general, Unexpected, don't write this, unexpected increase is considered as a good news and decrease is considered as a bad news. Are we okay with this? Next heading in the notes, clientile effect. Clientile effect. 
Tell me, what does this tell you? Yeah, hmm? Absolutely, yes. So, different group of shareholders will expect different types of dividend policy. So, imagine certain stocks in India which have been paying large amount of or all over the world which have been paying consistent amount of dividend. So, those, those stocks will automatically attract investors who expect some amount of cash flow in the form of dividends. Are you following this? Now, uh, for some reason, company suddenly changed his policy. Then, of course, those investors would not be willing to be in that stock anymore because they were used to receiving that type of dividend from the company every year. So, that's what they've said that once you start initiate a dividend policy, then certain type of clients get used to those dividends. Now, don't write this. I'll tell you what is to be written. So, client tile refer effect refers to varying preferences for different group of investors which also include institutions. Imagine large mature pension funds. Okay, so funds which have matured and if some part of their fund portfolio is in equities, they will expect some amount of cash flow to take care of all the accruing uh, pension liabilities. Correct, so they will also expect some amount of dividend there. Now companies structure their dividend policies which are consistent with the preference of their clientiles. Now this is what you are going to write down. So under the heading of clientile effect you can give this a one star. Something that you would want to remember for the exam. So what you would say is uh, clientile effect does not contradict m and &M theory. Clientile effect does not contradict m and &M theory. Just write what I am asking you to write. Clientile effect does not contradict m and &M theory. So see what, what did m and &M say? They said that whether you pay dividend or you do not pay dividend, it should not have any impact on valuation. Now what clientele effect tells us is that certain type of investors get used to the dividends. So if you suddenly stop paying, then those investors will go out. Will your value reduce? Yes or no? Yes. So does it appear to contradict with m and &M? Yes or no? Yes. But what m and &M says is they argue back saying that you are paying dividends, suddenly you stop paying. So people, the clientele which used to prefer dividends will exit but the clientele which did not prefer dividends will enter the stock and it would not have any impact on valuation of the stock. Okay, so from exam perspective, a theory point, but we are going to remember this. So I'm going to read out one more time. M and M, however, note that once all clientele are satisfied, changing the dividend policy would only entail changing clientiles and would not affect firm value. 